Hi guys, thought I'd share with you uh, some developments. Um, picked myself up a new roller tool cabinet from Harbor Freight the other day. And uh, it's quite the project actually. They had a sale and I went up there and you know, I, don't, I don't know what the deal is with those guys. <clears throat> You know, I've learned my lesson over the years of buying stuff on scene from Harbor Freight. So, uh, I went up there and I asked them uh, if I could take a look at the, the thing before I shelled out the cash. And, yeah, they didn't want to do it. So, uh, first thing the guy does is uh, shows me the floor model. Which, you know, was pretty much destroyed from some kind of shipping damage. I said, come on, man, you know, I'm not buying this thing. I want to look at the one I'm going to buy. So, you know, reluctantly, they, they, they dragged me down the back there where the warehouse is. And they unboxed one, and it was crushed. So then they unboxed another one, and it was all hacked up and scratched. They unboxed another one, and all the welds had popped on it. They unboxed another one, and finally, they came up with one that, that was acceptable to me. So, uh, you know, I inspected it, and uh, said, okay, you know, I'll, I'll buy this. And, uh, you know, these things are heavy, man. It took three guys to get it in the back of my pickup truck. And I think the advertised empty weight of it was, like, upwards of 240 pounds. So, you know, I strapped it down to tie downs, drove home, got it home, and backed the thing up to my shop. And then I discovered that my winch couldn't go high enough to lift it. Oh boy. Now the fun starts. It was just me at the time. So, uh, you know, basically what I had to do is uh, it comes with the wheels on it. And uh, I had to roll it off the back of my pickup truck onto my hydraulic lift cart. Um, hydraulic lift cart's like 28 inches long and the, uh, the uh, toolbox is 44. So uh, I had to like strap the thing down and you know, it was pretty precarious. But finally got it down to where uh, I was, I don't know, 16 inches off the ground or something like that. And then I was able to get some straps on it and hook it to the winch and lift it off the cart and get it on the ground. And, um, you know, got it in here. There wasn't much assembly to do to it. And then I discovered that a couple of the drawers didn't work very well. I should have checked, but... You know, the guys over there were kind of getting aggravated at me after they had opened up the third one and it was wrecked, so I didn't look at it as carefully as I should have. Fortunately for me, um, it was a couple of the uh, slides. Um, the balls had come out of the slides and they were laying in the bottom of the cabinet, so I retrieved them with a magnet. I had to take it apart. You know, the typical um, offshore kit of parts that you get when you are thinking you're going to get a real product. So, um, you know, basically what I found is that the um, little carriers that that hold the balls in, you know, were not assembled correctly, and. Um, I managed to get it all back together and now it works fine. But um, a word to the wise, um, if you're going to get one of these cabinets, um, make sure you get some buddies around because uh, it is substantially uh, well built for the money. Uh, paid $360 for this, it was on sale. You know, it's not a snap-on, but it, it is uh, better quality than I expected it to be. And uh, if you pick through the wreckage up there, um, you will um, be...
be able to come up with something that is a good uh, a good bargain for the money. So uh, we're going to take a little look at it and show you how we uh, change some stuff around in the shop here. Okay, so if you've seen my other videos, you can see that the, the black roller cabinet and the Craftsman thing have been replaced by this uh, this new cabinet. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not bad. It's not a bad cabinet for the money. Um, you know, I'm pretty pleased with the, uh, with what I ended up with here. And as you can see, it comes with, uh, you know, things that allow you to label all the drawers, which I did. And, uh, it's got these, uh, friction bump, uh, things to hold the drawer shut. They're not latched. Is like a detent. Um, right now they're kind of stiff, but I'm sure after some use they'll loosen up. Anyways, what I got here is you know in the, is, is a wide drawer. It's you know 42 inches wide on the top, and that um, is where I put all my measuring stuff. Now this here, um, you know, up up near the Harbor Freight that's near me. Well, it's not near me, but the closest one. There's a Bed Bath and Beyond near it. And just for yucks, I went in there and uh, picked up some some stuff, you know, in hopes that I could, you know, do these drawer dividers. It turns out that this is a steel, it's stainless, supposedly, a stainless steel mesh basket for kitchen utensils. But man, it fits in here like it was made for it. it cost 15 bucks. You know, I think I'm going to go up there and get a couple more of them because uh, they fit right in here perfect and... Uh, you know they're pretty, uh, they're pretty decent. You know they, you know they're 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 not cheap uh, junk. They're welded together, and you know so we got that in there, and that, that worked out pretty good. So yeah, I got um, you know centering indicator, got my sign bar, got some uh, pin gauges, some other stuff here. This is the tack I used to set up my VFDs. Um, so that's up in the top drawer there, you know, easily gotten to. And then go down, uh, you know, I got my micrometers and squares and stuff. This is kind of overflow from the top. Uh, that's my milling cutter drawer. Pretty much what I had. Uh, oh yeah, these drawers are full extension too, which is kind of nice. Um, this is pretty much what I had in my other box, except now I got a little more room to expand my collection. Still working on getting some uh, some containers for these guys. You know, I'm not too happy with uh, having them all banged together like that. But you know, when you go to flea markets, you can't always get the packaging with the tooling. Uh, we got, here's another drawer divider I picked up. This one's bamboo. Uh, I think this one was like eight bucks. Um, you know, we're, we're just trying out some various things here, but, uh, you know, I got my machinist jacks, V blocks, adjustable parallels, call up blocks. Got some other parallels here. Here's the tap and dies. Now I got enough room to put my wrenches in there with them. Which is kind of nice. It's kind of like uh, hex keys, you know, shop supplies, glue, markers. I got some deburring stuff in here. I got some heavy stuff down here. This is the same as what I had in my bottom drawer in my other roller cabinet. Angle plates, center uh, tail stock for the rotary table my uh, alignment bar for the rotary table, some tool posts and a call it indexer. Okay over here in the small drawers there's another one of these bamboo things full of center drills. Um, these bamboo things are kind of nice. I mean you know they're, they're small enough that they don't take up a whole lot of space. They're strong and um, they're cheap. I think I paid six bucks for this. You'll see some more in the other drawers too. Got my boring tools here for the 
for the uh, boring head or the um, the lathe. Here's some lathe tooling on my inserts, my carbide tools, um, some tool steel bits, thin bits, inserts, stuff like that. Here's uh, some brooches and uh, some sharpening stones. You've seen that before. My collection of Harbor Freight stock, we would call these things storehouses. You know, I got some set screws, some O-rings, roll pins, stuff like that. More of them down here. Snap rings, cotter pins. And down here I got a drill and some uh, lock line. So I'm pretty happy with that because I got a nice flat surface behind the lathe that I can work on. Um, these things came from Harbor Freight. It was a set for eight bucks. You know, I got some clamps in there and stuff from the from the mill. But uh, I really like the fact that now I got a flat surface behind the lathe that I can set things on. Um, here I did a little rearranging too. You've seen this. I got reamers in here. I got uh, test bars and lathe centers and stuff. Um, all my drills now fit in one drawer. So I'm pretty happy with that. And uh, here's some more of those bamboo things I bought. These small ones were like four bucks, the big ones were like six. Um, probably going to end up lining these with felt because uh, bamboo is, you know, a grass, so it's got silica in it, which is abrasive. But, um, you know, I think I might get some more of these things. Uh, they're cheap enough and they seem to fit in these drawers pretty good. Um, so, yeah, we got some. Uh, Got some shop improvement stuff going on here. I think it uh, gives me, well I know it gives me more storage space, but it makes everything a little cleaner. I don't, you know, have those boxes stacked up anymore. Um, one of the really cool things about this is um, for another 200 bucks you can get a side cabinet that bolts right onto the side here. And uh, that gives you seven more drawers, so if I ever run out of space I don't have to go out and get another cabinet. I can just get an attachment for this one. I've seen them on sale for like two bills. So, um, yeah. That's what's been going on in the shop um, for the last couple of days. Uh, but, you know, now I just got to get used to where everything is again. Hence the labels that I put all over the place. Well, that's about it for this one. Uh, have a good one. Hi guys. Um, lately everybody on the YouTube metal working communities has been showing off their favorite books. So I thought I would share one of mine. Um, my father gave me this book when I was a little kid. And uh, it probably steered me into areas of engineering and things. I um I'm not a machinist or a metal working professional. I do it strictly as a hobby. My uh background is electrical engineering and software development. But uh this book is one of my cherished possessions. It's called uh, Manufacturing Processes by Myron Bergman. And uh it's got a lot of cool stuff in it. It was uh, written, I believe, copyright 1942. Um, but there's a lot of really cool stuff in here. Starts off with like, uh, well, let me see if I can find the table of contents for you. I'm reading this upside down, so it's kind of tough, but, uh, you know, foundry work, pattern work, metal casting, die casting, plastic molding, heat treatment, 
That's a real good section. Welding, soldering, hard surfacing, hot and cold forming, inspection measurement, lathes, lathe work, lathe tools, threads, on and on and on. And uh, you know, I've read this book countless times from cover to cover. The first uh, exposure I ever had to machining was in high school in shop class. And having absorbed just about everything I possibly could out of this book, I was really way ahead of everybody. <clears throat> you know, when I walked in there, I knew exactly how to run a lathe. And uh, so, you know, the, the shop teacher, Mr. LaRosi, took me under his wing. We made a lot of stuff after school um, in that shop. Uh, he helped me build a whole go-kart out of there. Um, we had a lot of fun. So, uh, yeah, I figured I'd show you some pretty cool stuff in this book. Um, you know, you've seen guys like Tubal Cain doing this... Uh, and double boost doing castings like this with the uh, the flasks. It's all right here. Um, you know how to make patterns, all the machinery, the mullers, and everything. How to make cores, and uh, you know wood patterns. How to you know put the drafts in and all that. Um, it's really nice. But I've got a couple pages here. I wanted to show you. Here's a section on the heat treatment of steel. And, um, you know, I've used this countless times. Softening things up, hardening things up. I'm sure you've seen some of these graphs before. They don't change. But, uh, you know, real good stuff in here. Um, Here's something I I wanted to show you. I was talking the other day about in my shop safety video about how the acetylene tanks work. Here's here's a cross section of it showing the uh, the absorbing material and the the acetylene gas that's dissolved in the acetone. And you know, for you chemists out there, there's the uh, the thing that keeps it from blowing up. Some of this machinery, I mean, look at that thing, man. That is a huge, huge press. I don't know how many tons it is because I can't read upside down, but there's a guy standing there right there with his hand on the guards. Look at the size of that thing. Another huge press. Look at this one. There's a guy standing right there. I mean, this thing must be three stories tall, easy. It's amazing. Um, here's the here's a section that's interesting about how to how to run a lathe. You know the different parts. How cutting tools work. Feeds and speeds. Uh, yeah, here's another picture. I just. Took out for yucks. Look at the size of this thing. This is a shaper, I believe. Yeah. Oh, it's a planer. Man, look at the size of that thing. Couldn't fit that in my shop. Uh, turret lathe construction. Um, and then I, one other part that I thought was really very interesting was in the back of this book. In the appendix, they have uh, lab projects that you can make. I guess they graded them on it. Some uh, some of these pages have notes from my father in here about how he made stuff. I never I never got anything he made. I guess he never saved it. But um, you know, it's funny. He took these courses. He went to school for engineering. He ended up working for an insurance company. So he never used what he learned. Like father, like son, I guess. There's a there's a more center. So I just thought I'd share that with you guys. Uh, one of my favorite books. Um, hope you enjoyed that. Okay. So here's a little... Uh, 
interesting thing. As some of you may have seen in my other videos, I've made a few uh, ER32 collet attachments for you know things around the shop. This one, you know, is a mill. Goes it's an R8 holder. This one goes on my lathe chuck, and this one goes in the tailstock. And up until now, I've been swapping this nut between the three of them. Well, I went on the Inco site, and I was going to buy another couple of nuts, and um, you know they want 38 bucks a piece on sale for those things. Well, I happened to be perusing Amazon the other day looking for bearings and I found this one eight bucks I don't know where it was made I don't really care fits everything so there's a little lesson for you Inco doesn't always have the best deals 38 bucks now on the other hand I was looking for uh, a pin spanner for uh, my collet blocks and uh, Inco had them for 21 bucks on sale and uh, Amazon had the exact same thing for 30 bucks so you gotta shop around but uh, you need an ER32 collet nut check out Amazon and it uh, it came with free shipping too so uh, there you go.